to the Holy Mass that we celebrate this day on the Wednesday of the seventh week after Easter or of Easter. Today we'll be um, celebrating the memorial of St. <coughs> Augustine of Canterbury, who was a bishop and uh, a great uh, proponent and uh, proclaimer of the gospel. Our Mass intentions for today are for Alpi Drigo, requested by the Arezzi family, and Louis Gallo, requested by his wife, Rose Marie. As we begin, we pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we come together in faith, mindful of our faults and our failings, and very much aware of God's great love for each one of us. For the times that we've sinned, we ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you love us beyond all measure. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your love leads us ever closer to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the preaching of the Bishop St. Augustine of Canterbury led the English peoples to the Gospel, grant, we pray, that the fruits of his labors may remain ever abundant in your Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock, of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which he tend the church of God, that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth, to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. <clears throat> and now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work of that sort, we must help the weak. And keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing, Sing to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of the earth. earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, 
with which you took our part for your temple in Jerusalem. Let the kings bring you gifts. Sing, sing to, to God, God, the kingdoms, kingdoms of the earth. earth. <coughs> the kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Chant praise to the Lord, who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold his voice resounds, the voice of power. Confess the power of God. Sing, sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms of the earth. Over Israel is his majesty. His power is in the skies. Awesome in his sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing, sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. <coughs> Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Although we don't hear very often this passage that we had in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, with Paul and it being at Miletus and speaking to the, the leaders of the church there in Ephesus, um, it has a familiar ring to us. I say that because it's almost the same sentiments, the same love, the same concern as what Jesus had as he prepared his disciples, his apostles, for his imminent departure, his betrayal, his passion, and death. The language here is beautiful, as the writer of Acts gives us an insight into Paul. What does Paul say? He says, I've given all that I have for you in the time that I've spent with you. I've taught you. I've worked with you. You've seen the work that these hands have done with you. And I know you're concerned, but I must move on to whatever awaits me. But know this, I love you. I care for you. I've cried for you. He says, even when I admonished you, I had tears. You get this this overwhelming um, picture of Paul's great concern for that flock there and those who had been chosen to lead the others in faith. Paul understood about what we say when we are baptized, that we're called to put on Christ, to take on Christ's attributes, to love, 
to forgive, be concerned for the, the, the least among us, take care of the widows and orphans, to reach out to one another with what we have, with our hands, with our hearts, with our mind, with our person, so that we might share the love that we have received from God with those around us. It rings true. And as we hear the beautiful passage from the 17th chapter of John, the Gospel today, we hear that beautiful concern in Jesus' voice. Father, I wish that they were one as you and I are one. I want them to know the joy that I know in doing what you've called me to do. Holy Father, he prays, keep them in your name that you have given me. Sometimes that slips by us. What was the name that Jesus was given? It was exactly that. His name would be Jesus, for he saves. His concern for all was that they would be saved. And the way that they would find salvation that was offered to them was by walking in the light of his truth. At the end of this particular passage, he talks about them uh, living in the world, aware that there is bad in the world, but living in confident faith in this world because they had been consecrated in truth and in the Word. And who is that? It's none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the way, the light, the truth. Today, I encourage you just to think about that. Through our baptism, through our confirmation, through our willingness to follow this way, we're loved by our God, by our Lord Jesus, and sent into the world, consecrated in the truth. May he be praised forever by the lives that we live. Amen. So we bring our prayers and petitions before the Lord in confident faith. We pray for all leaders of the world that they might work through this pandemic with true concern for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering in any way, for those who care for them, that healing and wholeness may be effected through their efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, living in this time of uncertainty, that they may be strengthened in their faith and be able to walk confidently in God's truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence of all kinds, that people will truly respect the dignity of each and every life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who find themselves unemployed during this time or underemployed, for those struggling to put food on the table, for those who are uncertain what the future holds, that they continue to walk in the light of God's truth with our help, with our confidence and prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have died, members of our families and friends, those who have died alone, that they may now be embraced by our loving God for eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those needs and wants that we carry with us today in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers we make this day. For we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Amen. Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, on this feast day of blessed Augustine of Canterbury, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As members of God's family, we pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, says the Lord. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Let us pray. <clears throat> By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which Blessed of Elston of Canterbury never ceased to labor 
and for which he spent his whole life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed day.